to talk about vermouth. For most people, vermouth is something James Bond drinks before he shoots loads of people, or it's something you mix with various other bits and bobs to make cocktails like Manhattans and Negronis. Now, this is partly true for the Italian ones like Martini and Cinzano, or for French ones like Noi Prat. These are supposed to be mixed, really. However, that's what they do. I don't live there. I live in Spain, in Madrid. Now, in Madrid, this is this huge city, third largest in Europe, of grand palaces, beautiful parks, uh, churches, cathedrals, wonderful, wonderful views around. Yet, even though it's this big city, it's also really an overblown village of little tiny streets that house zillions and zillions of tapas bars and restaurants. And on a lot of them, you'll see the words vermouth del grifo, vermouth from the tap, neat vermouth, which is how we drink it here. Francois Monti says that all vermouth is a tonic of white wine, wormwood, a botanical mix of spices, herbs and flowers and whatnot, sugar, that's why it's sweet here, and distilled alcohol, so it's a fortified wine. Now, I drink a lot of this here, but I realised I didn't know much about it, and everyone I know doesn't know much about it. So, to find out more about it, I have to leave Madrid and head north. The cradle of civilization for Spain's vermouth as well as heavy industry, uh, stereotypical stinginess, and of course all this fancy modernist architecture is Catalonia. So I'm here in Barcelona, the capital of said region, in hunt for the vermouth lifestyle. Um, it's not from here, it's from this area. So we're gonna see what we can find going on in the land of vermouth here in Catalonia's great capital city. For me, it's always tricky to know where to eat and drink in Barcelona a fascinating and ancient city, somewhat overrun with tourism. After some googling, I found a little Catalan bar. I had a house vermouth, and then a second, and then, fearing my research not deep enough, enjoyed a third before stumbling back out into the heat to meet my first expert. So, I work, which means I don't drink it a lot during the week, I have to admit. We mostly drink vermouth, honestly, between my friends and I before lunch. Um, so that means Saturdays and Sundays, and depending on what the night was like before. Uh, usually that starts around one o'clock, um, sometimes a little bit later. But we'll usually go, we actually go to one place in particular all the time in Rabat, it's called El Mirai. We know the owners, we have a really great relation with them, and it's a really cool place. And we go there, have one or two rooms. I like to not drink more than that because I also like to have a few beers with lunch usually. <laughs> With the strong, huh? So, usually, yeah, before lunch. <laughs> What's your favorite way of drinking a vermouth? Is it in a cocktail or is it by itself? No, by itself. And actually, I like it by itself, nothing in it. Um, one really hilarious character at a bodega near my house once told me if they put something in it, like an olive or an orange slice or a slice of lemon, it's because they're trying to mask the crappiness of the vermouth. Every I don't know if I agree with that because most places nowadays put something in it, but I think that's because it's become really trendy. Um, it's true, you ask most uh, experts that the traditional way, at least in Barcelona, to serve it is with nothing in it. In Madrid, we always have it with like a slice of orange and ice. Yeah. Um, so that's bad, that's bad vermouth. I mean, this is controversial. <laughs> but teach his own, right? You drink it at home? No, we never, never. drink it. Honestly, it's not something we buy. In a bar, okay. It's an excuse to leave the house. The city's saving grace was the Grathia neighbourhood, a slightly scruffy but very quiet ex village stuffed with wonderful tapas bars, local businesses, markets, and most importantly, vermouth. Lots of vermouth. In general, I didn't notice the vermouth culture that publicly in Barcelona, but perhaps, as was so often the case with the great Catalan city, I just didn't know where I was looking. As the Mediterranean sun slid off to the other side of the world, I decided I would have one more vermouth before bed. Tomorrow, I will be leaving Barcelona and heading on somewhere new. To learn a bit more of the wine, I've come here to the town of Reus, which is where the whole business really started in Spain back in the 1800s. I'm outside the museum, which is very cool and modern, 
I'm going to look around town, I'm going to drink a bit, and then I'm going to visit Miro, which is one of the largest and most important and historic family-run bodegas in here. Um, I'm already one vermouth in, so it's a good start. But yeah, this is the home of vermouth, really, a little town about an hour and a half south of Barcelona. Reus is quite cute, and it's seemingly completely dedicated to vermouth. Every single bar, vermouth on tap, different types. But if you want vermouth, this is very much the right place to come. El, el vermouth es un vino aromatizado con sustancias vegetales, sobre todo de, de plantas de género Artemisa. Y bueno, en, en la elaboración del vermouth intervienen más de 40 especies, plantas diferentes en cada, en cada elaboración. Tenemos una elaboración especial para el vermouth blanco, otra para el vermouth rojo, otra para el vermouth reserva, otra para el extra dry y cada cual tiene su, su característica diferenciada, en, sobre todo en, la, en las maceraciones de hierbas. Reus, de hecho, lo que fue fue la cuna donde cuando entró el tema vermouth en, en, el, en el territorio español, entró en, en Reus. ¿no? Llegaron a haber 30 elaboradores de vermouth que hacían unas 50, se fabricaban unas 50 marcas. ¿no? En esos momentos, lo que es, los que podemos utilizar la marca Vermouth de Reus, somos tres, tres únicos elaboradores que quedamos, ¿no? que también fabricamos marcas, no solo las nuestras, pero también fabricamos marcas para terceros. Pues miro, y seguir aquí... Iris. Iris. ¿Y Rofes? Rofes era un fabricante, un elaborador, pero que ahora se ha convertido el espacio en un... En un, en un restaurante. Nosotros, de hecho, tenemos una continuidad en el mundo del vermouth porque aquí todo el mundo habla de años. ¿no? Nosotros ahora hablamos de 1914, que fue el inicio de la familia en el mundo del vino, ¿no? y en el año 57 se especializaron en vermouth. ¿no? Pero venían del vino. Entonces, el vino, que es un elemento principal en la, en la, en la elaboración de los vermouth, que eso lo hemos trasladado al conocimiento de generación en generación. Ya estamos ya en una cuarta generación que que, 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 sí, que, 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 que sigue, que sigue con, este, con, este, con este conocimiento, ¿no? pero con continuidad Familia. en el mundo del vermouth, en Reus, solo quedamos nosotros. Por ejemplo, para el vermouth rojo, corteza de naranja, y para el vermouth blanco, corteza de limón. Pues yo me lo tomaría yo, en concreto, sin hielo y si acaso con una aceituna. Yo también, con, sin, solo frío y con pues, una, una, un trozo de piel de, de naranja. Back in Madrid, I decided I wanted to meet some madrileños who were au fait with Vermouth's modern incarnation. I had seen Barcelona's method and had been lucky enough to see Vermouth at its source. But it was high time I learned about the Vermouth tradition in my adopted hometown. On a hot afternoon, I strolled through the pretty streets of Madrid's oldest barrio, La Latina, and grabbed a drink with two local Vermouth gurus. The uh, perfect time to drink Vermouth in Madrid would be 12 at noon. Starting at 12, you can start drinking. 11.15, maybe not, but 12 is the perfect time. And I think that's the moment everyone goes out of their homes. I think it's not very common to drink it in your house. So you meet people to drink vermouth. You meet them probably maybe around one um, before lunch. But it's a social thing. So you meet people, you start getting some tapas, you have one vermouth, you have two vermouths, you have three vermouths, you have up to as much vermouth as you want. Uh, but always with food. I don't think it's never by itself. And maybe that would be the thing you have before lunch. So you start vermouth, tapas, and then you go sit down and have your lunch with wine or beer or whatever you want. So it's the starting point, let's say. Yo creo que la tradición más, más o menos es la misma. Lo único que yo creo que la tradición en Barcelona de beber vermouth es más la palabra salir a tomar el vermouth y realmente es un momento quizás menos social o prácticamente igual de social que aquí, pero más corto. Eh, Madrid, salir a tomar el vermouth, eh, sal, eh, significa salir a tomar el vermouth, salir a tomar copas y se alarga mucho. Y el aperitivo. Y en Barcelona yo creo que es más sales a tomar un vermouth con tu tapa y punto. Y te vas a casa a comer. I think vermouth skipped the generation, so it's making a comeback. Vermouth has always been there. And your grandfather used to drink it, maybe your parents didn't, or maybe a little bit, but you didn't took up on that tradition. It is a trend, so people are starting to go with it, but I don't think it's as hipster as 
okay, I'm following this trend, and now it's gonna stay there. It's gonna, I'm gonna bring it back, I'm gonna stay with it. If you don't like it, you don't bring it back. But if you do, you know, it's it's not something that's gonna stay here for just a small amount of time. Y en los años 50, 60, 70, también fue una muy fuerte tradición de tomar el vermouth. Quizás por eso ahora los viejos toman vermouth, porque era moderno en los años 60, o en los años 70, ¿no? Yo creo que eh, la bebida es la misma, lo que, lo que se ha reinventado quizás es la manera de presentarla. O sea, ha habido una nueva manera de presentarlo, como aquí en Tony, con el vermouth está empezando a pasar lo mismo. Quizás el primero fue Casa Mayor en hacer esa botella que era como de ginebra tan bonita y tan hipster. Entonces, eh, después gente también como nosotros que lo trajimos con DJs y la hora del vermouth con tapas con, con cocineros actuales. Eh, estas cosas yo creo que han atraído mucho a la gente porque la gente está ávida por tener nuevas bebidas y nuevas cosas también como la cerveza artesana y con la bermutería pop up un poco también es lo que quería llevar la, la sensación de, de tomar el vermut en el bar de los abuelos pero con, con ahora mismo con la gente de 30 40 años tomando el vermut mientras eh, mientras escuchan música de ahora I like it on the typical Spanish beer uh, glass la caña and I like it with two cubes of ice. If it's red, I like it with an orange slice, a slice of orange, and if it's white, I like it with a lemon slice. And always with an olive. A mí, pues como más me gusta es quizás eh, con un poquito de ginebra eh, en el vaso de caña también, con la naranja y igual con un toque de algún bitter de bitter de naranja o de angostura. So whether it's Madrid or Barcelona, whether it's from a tap or from a bottle, whether it's alone or with friends or with orange or ice or an olive, it doesn't matter. What matters is the most is really tasty and that you start drinking it. Salud.